Okay, welcome to a new episode. This episode is going to be a little different in two ways. Firstly, I'm going to do the whole episode on my phone, edit it on my phone, upload it, the whole shebang on my phone. Usually I use Audacity, but I'm going to try the Gorilla way and do it on my phone. So we'll see how that works out. And secondly, it's a review, but it's a request review. And this request was by Jason Connolly from the Nerds RPG Variety Cast. And it is for the game Morkborg, the Swedish death metal OSR style game. But before I get onto the review, I just want to talk about last weekend. Last weekend, I traveled down to the Burton Sci-Fi and Fantasy Con where I met up with my fellow Purple Worm podcaster, John Allen Large, and also of the Red Dice Diaries. And the reason I travelled down was John said that he was going to try and run 5th edition The Basic Rules, as recommended by Colin Green from Spike Pit. And I told John that if he was going to run that, I would head over and play. So I did. We played, went down, played with Shandy Andy from uh, Unguarded Trevor, podcast and Barry for from the Shadow of the GM podcast I think it's called and I got to take part in three sessions of fifth edition basic the only changes John made to the rules was there was no death saves and he added an inspiration mechanic and I have to say my thoughts on it were it was definitely D&D a slightly different D&D, but it still had the D&D f- feel. And I thoroughly enjoyed the three sessions. We had, I think, five or six character deaths. But if you want to hear more about how we got on with that, then head over to the Red Dice Diaries podcast, and I'll leave a link in the show notes of where to go for that, where John talks extensively about that weekend. And I just want to say a big thanks to John for putting me up that weekend. I had a great time, met some great people, and we even got to watch a Nicolas Cage movie. The Colour of Space, which was cool. So that's enough for that, and on to the review of Mortborg. So what is Mortborg? Mortborg is a Swedish role-playing game, which uh, was kick-started, and it describes itself as a pitch-black apocalyptic fantasy RPG about lost souls and fools seeking redemption, forgiveness of the last remaining riches in a bleak and dying world. So it's a complete game in the OSR genre. And I will say up front, if you don't like in-your-face art, uh, then this is going to be a bit jarring for you because Mortborg is... I would describe the art in the style of the Scrap Princess, if you've ever seen any of their work on the Lamentation books. The front cover is a skeleton with a animal's head with a shield covered in blood. I'm reviewing the PDF copy. The book isn't out yet. So right off from the bat, we have some random tables in the front end papers and the rear end papers of the book. And these random tables give you a feel for the setting. For example, there's a D12 weather table. The sort of weather you can look for is lifeless grey, hammering rain, dead quiet, black as night, soup, thick mist so you can see it's a dark and bleak world the credits on the inside cover show that this book was printed in latvia it and that over 100 typefaces were used in the book there's also a list of doom metal bands that you can listen to to get a vibe for the book mark borg translated means dark fall. Every page is different. It's a two-page spread and no two pages are the same. There's bright colours, there's dark colours, there's different fonts, there's different styles. You could open each uh, double spread and it is like a separate zine. So the um, world is dark, the, the sun hasn't been seen for years and the basilisks There's two basilisks that uh, are like gods and they rule the world. Uh, Each basilisk has two heads and the basilisks argue each other. There's a stylized map of the area of the world and the first few pages are all giving you sort of background feel of the genre with a little bit of history. Let's say every double page is different. And then we get on to the rules of the game. 
the first rules of the game are that as a group, you've got to decide um, how close are we to the end of the world. If the end is nigh, then once a day, you're rolling a D2, and on a score of one, a misery befets the world. If it's a cruel month, you're rolling a D6 every day, and again, you're looking for ones. If you think it's the fall of anguish, you're rolling a D10 every day, half year is a d20 every day and if you think years of pain it's a d100 every day and any time a one is rolled then you are rolling for one of the miseries which is a d66 table set up as a religious text with six psalms and six verses underneath you can never have the same misery twice and once you've got six miseries the next time you roll a one is you get the seventh misery and it is Psalm 7-7, seven, seven, and the world finally dies. The seventh seal is broken for the seventh and final time. The game and your lives end here, and it recommends you burn the book. Everything is over. So this, from the outset, sits out that you in, are in a dark and withering world where things are dying. And if I pick out some of the miseries that you can get, and the ground pales with maggots is one of the miseries. Another misery is, and for five days and five nights shall fathers weep. So this game is telling you from the outset that the world is bleak, it's coming to an end, and it's only a matter of time. And I quite like that this uh, random end to the game, but as players and as a group, you decide whether it's going to be a short game when it can end in a matter of days, or whether you want a longer campaign. So then we come up to character creation. And you start off with 2d6 times 10 silver in one hand. In the other hand, you have a water skin and d4 days worth of food. As the rules tell us, your soul and your silver are your own and equally easy to lose. Then there is a d6 and 2d12 tables to tell you what you've got in your backpack and what items you've got. So your equipment is randomized. You randomize your weapons and armor, you roll your abilities, roll your hit points, and name your character if you wish, but it will not save you. And there's also some optional rules for randomizing or choosing a class, and some more tables and omens. Armor, you roll a d4, and you either have no armor, light, medium, heavy armor and basically armor subtracts from any damage you take so light armor is a minus d2 damage the damage you take or well, heavy armor any damage you receive will be minus d6 and armor also affects any agility test uh, test that you may make you can also have a shield which is minus one damage or you can sunder your shield to ignore all damage from one attack then we have a page of equipment that you can have and a cost for the equipment and how to repair armor and how to buy services and then we come on to the abilities there are four abilities agility presence strength toughness and basically you roll a 3d6 and then depending on what the result is your ability has a modifier of minus three to plus three and that is the only thing that you need to know. You don't need to record your ability scores. You just need to know what the modifier is. All tests are made, but against a difficulty rating. And to succeed, you roll your d20 and add or subtract your ability modifier, looking to equal or score greater than the difficulty rating. And the difficulty rating is normal, is a, is a difficulty of 12, and then it can drop to six for so simple people laugh at you for failing or 18 should not be possible. You have a carrying capacity of your strength plus eight. And that's how many items that you can carry. You start off with your hit points of your toughness modifier plus a D8. So in the worst case scenario, um, you're going to have one hit point, but never less but you could have up to 11 hit points. So not a great amount to start with. At zero hit points, you are broken. And there's a table for what happens when you're broken and you roll a D4 for, which is uh, either unconscious for a number of rounds with D4 hit points, or you're dead. If you get into negative hit points, you are dead. <clears throat> so onto combat. Combat is nice and simple. You roll a D6, 
On the 1 to 3, the enemies go first, or 4 to 6, the PCs go first. And all roles are player facing. That means that the players are making all the roles. The GM doesn't make roles. In melee, you test your strength versus a difficulty of 12. If you're doing a ranged attack, you test your presence, the difficulty of 12. And if you're defending against an attack, you test your agility versus a difficulty of 12. And if you fail your defense, the enemies attack you. How many ever attacks to get per round? Crits are on a natural 20. And when you attack with a crit, uh, you do double damage. And also the armor protection of your foe is dropped one level. So from a D6, they would drop to a D4 damage reduction and a D4 to down to a D2. If you crit when you are um, defending, then you get to make a free attack back against the creature. Fumbles occur on a natural one. When you are attacking and roll a natural one, your weapon breaks or is lost. So you really need to have multiple weapons with you if you want to be sure to succeed because you've got a 5% chance that your weapon is going to break or is lost. If you are defending and roll a natural fumble, then you take double damage and your armor is reduced one tier. So medium armor would become light armor. And you can get your armor repaired if you've got time and the money to do it. But your, if your armor is reduced below the first tier, then it cannot be repaired and you've lost your armor. Then we go on to rest reaction morale. Uh, a short rest with a drink restores D4 hit points. A full night's sleep restores D6 hit points. If you become infected, you do not benefit from resting and instead you lose a D6 of hit points daily. Reactions from Monsters is your normal style OSR reaction table on 2D6. And similarly, you have a morale table for enemies as well, uh, which is tested if the leader is killed, half the group is eliminated, or a single enemy has a third of its hit points left. So that is pretty standard stuff. Then we get on to character advancement. And the Games Master decides when a character should be improved. So there is no set way to um, no set um, point where you decide a character improves or worsens. And that is the big thing in this game. Not only can your character get better when they level up, but they can get worse. So there are three steps that you follow when the GM decides that a character should be improved. Firstly, you roll 6d10. And if the result is greater, equal to or greater than their current maximum HP, then HP increases by D6. Then you roll a D6 to see what they find in the debris. And that can be nothing to silver, to an unclean scroll or a sacred scroll. And this is how magic is dealt with in Morkborg. It's by scrolls of the two types. And then finally, you roll for ability changes. And you roll a d6 against each of your four other abilities. And if the result equals or is greater than the ability, it is increased by one to a maximum of plus six. If your result is below the ability, then you decrease your ability by one. But the plus point is that if you have abilities between minus three and plus one, they are always increased by one unless the D6 result is a one, the ability is then reduced by one, but never below minus three. So minus, th minus three is your maximum. So you could get to the point when you've got four abilities at minus three. Hmm. Then we get on, on to the magic system. The magic system is called powers, and it is found through written scrolls, of which there are two types. Every morning, you roll your presence plus a D4 to determine how many times you can use your powers that day. When you read a scroll, you make a difficulty test of 12 using your presence. And if you succeed, your power is activated and you use one of your slots from your daily total. If you fail, the power doesn't work. You lose D2 hit points and you become dizzy for the next hour. 
And there's also an optional crit table, uh, crit and fumble table for magic uh, at the back of the book. Um, so that is an option you can plug in. There are 10 unclean scrolls and 10 sacred skulls. The spells are kept very simple with a title and a brief description. The only downside to them is that the, some of the um, spells could do with a better description, but I'm sure that they will be discussed on the forums later. And let me give you an example of some of the spells. Telekinesis, you can move an object up to 1d10 by 10 feet for d6 minutes. Your eyelids blind the blind. Bind the bind? Oh, eyelids blind the mind. Some of this text is very difficult to read. A D4, D4 creatures fall asleep for one hour unless they succeed a difficulty 14 test. And I said that some of the um, spells are unclear. One that springs straight to mind is death. All creatures within 30 feet lose a total of 4d10 hit points. Now, does that just mean creatures that are not PCs? Can you can you distribute the, the hit points as you wish? Does any of it bleed over to the characters? It's not clear. Maybe it's up for the GM and the place to decide. Omens. Omens are, um, are like luck points. If you play without classes, every character begins with a D2 omen. So you're going to get one or two omens. And when depleted, you roll a D2 if playing without classes and regain that many omens. And you spend omens to deal maximum damage with one attack or re-roll a dice roll, yours or someone else's, or lower damage dealt to you by a D6 or neutralize a crit or fumble or lower one's test difficulty by minus four. And then we have some optional tam uh, tables for terrible traits, which you can have. Uh, so you can be bitter, deceitful, wasteful, arrogant. There's some broken bodies. So you could have a red swollen alcoholic's nose, decaying teeth. They all give flavor to it. A bad habit table, a D20. You pick your nose so deep it bleeds. You stutter when lying. So these all give flavors to characters if that's your jam. The whole group can share the same backstory, or you can share a tale. So it says, roll a d20 or throw a, a knife at the page to the right. Some of the choices you can have here is, you are pursued for manslaughter that is bounty. Burn or be burned is the fate you accept. Again, it's all playing into this death metal, doom metal type scenario. Then we have the D20 table for crits and fumbles. And then we go on to the optional classes. There are six optional classes, and you guessed it, these aren't your normal OSR-style cl uh, classes. We have Fang Deserter, Gutterborn Scum, Esoteric Hermit, Wretched Royalty, Heretical Priest, and Occult Herb Master. And each one of these classes gives you uh, details of how you get your abilities, and each one is different. They have a random table um, that gives you some background, how many omens you get, and some more background information. And then we get on to the bestiary. And the bestiary is, wow. The first creature is a goblin, and you think, yeah, I've seen goblins to a penny. But no, 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 these aren't your normal goblins. All goblins carry a curse. They have six hit points, a morale of seven, have ropey skin, which gives them a D2 minus the damage. They have a knife or short bow that causes D4 damage, and they have quick attacks and their defense are difficulty 14. But the things about these goblins is that you must find and kill the goblin before your mind is paralyzed. If the cursed kind creature still lives D6 days after the attack, you will walk irrevocably into one yourself. Then only the dark side of Sarkash will hind you. So there's several monsters in here, creatures. They are completely different. And remember, they don't have levels as such. They are, uh, you are defending against their attacks. So we've got things like an undead doll, a zombie, a troll, a lich, a blood-drenched skeleton, but these aren't your normal OSR-style creatures. 
And then we have some henchmen that can help you out. We have an earthbound, a wild wickhead, a pale one, and a prowler. Um, and these are followers that can help you out. And they've got their own stats with their traits and specialities and values. And then at the end of the book, you have a sample adventure, which shows you how cruel and how deadly this game really is. And then at the back of the book, you have a, a random table for making dungeons, giving the name of the dungeon, the dangers some sample rooms, distinctive features. And then you have got a one page list of the main rules, which is set out nice and easy. So Mortborg is, it's a sledgehammer to the brain when you read this one. It really is. And it's sort of reminds me a bit of the Lamentations uh, style um, games and settings. Uh, it's really in your face. But I have to say that this is uh, a little bit different. Um, and I'm going to mention the website mortborg.com which backs us up on mortborg.com you can get some character sheets in english and swedish uh, there is a random character generator which will gen pieces for you there's some mortborg t-shirts and then they have the mortborg cult which is a bit like a guild it's a sub label for selected, improved, and curated mortboard content. And basically, you can send it um, and stuff into them. There's no monetary compensation for any content you contribute, um, and it will all, but it, so you may not sell it anywhere else, and it'll always be free to download for other people, but they may put it in compilations uh, and might make art available through purchase, um, but the digital version will always be free. Um, they do have some good restrictions, though. Um, it says they welcome all content, but but they will never accept racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic content. Um, so that is good. So you, it's horror, but they don't want some of the overtones that sometimes is established with this sort of uh, genres. And I know it. So they're trying to stay away from the stuff that, um, that I don't want to see anyway. And then there's some free PDFs to download. There's um, Eat, Pray, Kill, or 54 Fully Started Monsters. There's uh, Rules for Overland Travel. There's a new class called the Pale One. A new class called Cursed Skinwalker. And then some French character sheets. So some good quality content uh, as well. So that's my review of Mortborg. I know it's gone on a bit. Um, it's one of these you're either going to love it or hate it. The art is jarring. The, the page design is jarring. But I think it fits in really well with the theme. So I know I've gone on a bit uh, with this, this episode. But I think there is a lot of content in this 80 or so page book. I hope you enjoyed that, Jason, and thank you for listening, and I will see you all on the flip side. You have been listening to the Dragons Are Real podcast. My name is Pete Jones. You can find more information at my website at petejones.neocities.org or at my blog at dragonsarealpodcast.tumblr.com The opening music was Fireflies and Stardust by Kevin MacLeod. The closing music, also by Kevin MacLeod, was Fretless 